<laughs> Welcome back, I'm Tedward, and today we're going to take a little therapy drive on a nice evening here in New England. The temperatures are starting to finally come down where you can enjoy being outside without fear of burning up yourself or your engine. And I just love the way this M5 looks at night, especially the LCI car. The best thing about therapy drives at night like this, it's all the sounds. It's being able to drive and listen and experience the world in a different time. Because during the day, you don't get all the toads and the crickets and the bugs, and especially on a crisp summer evening, you can hear everything. And that also translates to your car because your exhaust will sound extra spicy. So let's hop in my M5. And not to ruin it for you, but all those bug noises, the frogs and stuff, they're not doing it for your benefit. I'm pretty sure they're just horny and trying to meet a mate. So the things we decide are beautiful. All right. So smooth. So for most of the last couple months, therapy drives have been a bit challenging because gas prices are outrageous. And where I live, it's mostly residential to get to any roads that are fun to actually tackle as an enthusiastic driver. I mean, look, they've got these signs everywhere to make sure that you're in check. You don't want to be a speeder past the people. You know, I don't want to be hurting any kids who are running after a ball in the street. That's not the goal for enthusiasts. And to get anywhere fun, to go somewhere really good where the roads are safe and empty and exciting and well paved, uh, takes a bit of travel which means miles on the car, it means time, it means fuel. And in most circumstances, that's not such a big deal. But gas was so expensive over this summer that I found it really difficult to justify those drives to going out to those places. And they're just starting to come down now. I'm seeing regular at like 389 and under right now, which is fantastic because it's been five dollars and, and 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 it's been crazy i'm putting premium premium in all my cars and it is it is an exorbitant expense for somebody who barely wants to rent a three dollar movie on youtube so you know driving is therapy but driving is also stressful when you're like i just spent sixty dollars to clear my head when <laughs> i could have there's other things you could figure out for 60 bucks the torque of this engine man it is so special it is such a treat and that's what's beautiful is that like this this s62 i mean maybe on video it feels like oh he's not redlining it why aren't you going for it you don't need to and that's like the charm of this car is being able to exercise it in a way that isn't abusive. You know, you know a, a, an engine that you feel like you don't need to use 100% of all the time is an engine that you feel like is gonna last a long time. And I know that's kind of a crazy statement to say about a, a BMW, but <laughs> it's true. But you still gotta burn off the carbon off of those, uh, those valves once in a while. But granted, it's not direct injection or anything fancy like that. But this really is an enjoyable car to be in at night because it's quiet, it's insulated, you still feel things in the road. You still hear that engine, but only when you're on it, only when you've asked to hear it. I think that's really special. So in the comments, I would love to hear what you do for your therapy drives. Where do you go? And I don't mean like tell me where the roads are, but like, do you have to travel far? Are they right outside your door? You know, the roads that I drive as my therapy, like right now, this is a, a casual cruise, right? And hopefully it'll open up a little bit. Maybe we can have some fun, but I don't even care. I just, I just wanted to go for a drive. I wanted to exercise this car. I wanted to feel the shifter despite it not being as good as my Honda Civic, which is what a, what a bizarre thing that we're in now. We're comparing E39 M5s to Honda Civic SIs. Uh, let's try this. But 
when it comes to drive therapy, I do think I need to explore more because there's some cool stuff out here. You know, I'm looking at some cornfields, some great barns and houses that have been added on to for generations, things like that. And that's what I'm cur curious about with you guys. Like, where do you go for your therapy drives? What's a therapy drive mean to you? Does it, does it have to be 10 tenths toge runs? Or can it just be, you know, poodling around town, really chill, just enjoying the vehicle, windows down, listening to the frogs? Sometimes I feel like I only drive when I have to drive with purpose. I have to go to somewhere, go to work, go to my friend's house, execute a plan. And I mean, frankly, that's just no way to live because driving should also be fun. Driving should be an enjoyable thing. It shouldn't just be a task that you only tick up this odometer for the sake of doing something. It should be something that we do for fun. And I know I did that more in the past and I'm, I'm going to make a point of doing more of that going forward because of course I drive for the channel. Of course I have fun with the things that I drive. Oh, what a sick GTO behind me, listen to this. wish he'd get on it a little bit. I mean, that guy's not going anywhere. He's got, he's out there in his 60s GTO just to be out there in his 60s GTO, you know? And, and that's why I think there's value in classic cars because classic cars, you're probably not going to buy the classic car to commute it. You're probably not going to buy the classic car to run errands during rush hour traffic. You are probably driving that, that classic car for the sake of driving. And that's what I, I need to do more with my Porsche. Now the Porsche, just as an update, I did it. Uh, my buddy Justin over at Bond Group did an oil change and replaced a fan belt for me. Great job, all the goodies. Um, just little things to make sure that we're gonna be surviving the season. And then of course I go home and I fill the gas tank to the brim. You know, I let it click one time. I didn't let it click twice, I just let it click once. But that's always my mistake with these cars. And I brought it home and it smelled like fuel. And it didn't smell like fuel anywhere else. It smelled like fuel then. And then I saw a couple drops of fuel at the front of the car. So I was like, oh no, like do I have a, a leak in the fuel pump? What's going on? And I don't like messing with fuel leaks. Fuel leaks are scary on a classic car, especially on a Porsche. You don't want to burn to the ground. So, you know, we, we dissected it a bit, me and my father, and we looked and ran it with the fuel, you know, and checked all the fittings on the fuel pump and everything's dry. It's not leaking out of the fuel pump or anything. None of those lines, everything looks good. And it's not leaking in the back, which is very good because that's where things get um, dicey, sparky and flamey. Don't want that. But what I'm thinking is that I filled the tank and there must be some sort of like weep valve where it's like, oh yeah, it's like sloshes out and it's like a pressure relief and it probably took some of the fuel with it, probably dropped a few drops. And I bet if I drive it and burn off some, like, you know, a quarter tank or, you know, not even, I bet that all goes away. I bet it's just because I filled the tank, but that's always a scary thing to experiment with. And I've been a little hesitant to just burn off a little bit of fuel to check it. Um, again, feel you're gonna feel free to leave your comments about that. In the, <laughs> in the section below. But, you know, that's the, that's the struggle with these classic cars is that while they are enjoyable to drive, you also want to preserve them. And sometimes it's just so easy to table them. It's so easy to let them sit. And, and, I, and I want to not let them sit. I want to use them. And this M5 is an example of a car that I have allowed to sit for far longer than I should have. I really did just let it sit at Garage 42, which is the best possible place for it because it's a climate controlled environment. There's no mice. It's it's not like it's drying out and becoming a, a heap of a nightmare, but cars do need to be driven. Older cars definitely need to be driven because all the things that move, they want to move. You have to move them. And if you don't move them, if you don't keep oil circulating through all those channels, things can get gummed up, rubber can get dry. All the bad things that you don't want to experience in your car will happen just by virtue of sitting.
so while a lot of people are rocking one car, the, the financially savvy people who actually have their shit together and just say, this car makes sense, which is what the M5 really was when it came out. This car was the wolf in sheep's clothing that allowed you to buy the singular vehicle that gave you the thrill of a powerful V8, 400 horsepower. And to be in the 400 horsepower club in 2001, that's a pretty big deal. You know, you're looking at like 911 turbos, Ferrari 360s, uh, Corvette Z06. You know, that is what had 400 horsepower in the early 2000s. And this gave people the opportunity with like families like, oh, well, you know, you got to take the kids to work and you don't have, you don't have room in the, in the garage for a Corvette or a Porsche. So pick one car. Well, you know, mom or dad could pick the M5 and kind of get the best of both worlds where they, they get a, a practical family car that they can commute to work in every day, but also get in the pedal, get on the highway and do 150 miles an hour, no problems. And that's why this car was kind of like the financially savvy thing for somebody, even though sure, it was probably 70, 75 grand. It actually probably saved them money because instead of spending like 50 or 60 grand on a 540 or a 530 and then getting the, the 911 Turbo or a Corvette Z06, spending an extra, you know, 70, 80 grand on those too. I don't know that the Corvette was that expensive. It's probably 65. It's probably a bargain. But for those of us who have multiple cars, we need to be clever and we need to not be cheap about maintaining them and we need to drive them. You can't look at that odometer. You got to block it out. You got to block out that odometer and just use the thing. It's tricky. My buddy, Team Champagne Ninjas, he has been getting really good at driving all of his cars because he's got the LFA, the SL65 Black, an Icon FJ, uh, a, 9, a 993 Turbo, a 993 C4S, among others, the Unimog, you know, and, and, when you've got like 10, 12, 15 cars, it's really easy to forget about them. It's really easy not to drive them. And not driving cars is the worst thing for them. So these therapy drives, man, this is the way to do it. And if you're able to keep multiple cars at your house, then maybe you'll be able to do that more efficiently. I can't always do that. I usually kind of just pick two and keep those two at the house and then leave one at Garage 42 until winter. Then I leave two at Garage 42. But, you know, I get obsessed with the odometer, I get obsessed with uh, all that nitty gritty crap, but you gotta forget about it and just drive. Listen, listen to this. That's the best thing in the world, man. so easy to love this car. It's just so easy to love driving. I hope the thing that you guys take away from this channel on a regular basis is that it, it's not a, always about the car. It's about driving. It's about operating. It's about being the, the, the human element of the equation. And that, that definitely gets lost on a lot of people. They, they forget that driving is about driving. <laughs> this car still screams. I gotta say, man, this is always a surprise, always a treat. <laughs> and this drivetrain, like, it's not a slam gear kind of car, you know? I'm being gentle because I want this to get dragged six feet to last forever. I don't want to be, like, shocking this drive line. I want to drive this for a very, very long time. And, you know, I'm not going to go just rip through a set of gears like it's a drag racer for the sake of a video. I'm going to treat it with respect so I can keep it forever. But, man, oh, man, 
this just does not get old. I, I'm always shocked at how fast this car still feels. So I hope you guys get out there and drive your cars, enjoy them, no matter what you're driving. Like, are you driving a Honda Accord? Are you driving a Hyundai Sonata, a Prius? It doesn't matter. Just get out there and drive and enjoy it and do it within you know financial reason don't put yourself into trouble for it but if right now gas prices are in a place where you can go out for 20 or 30 minutes clear your head listen to your favorite song put the windows down listen to the bugs drive through a city with with some interesting things to see just go out and do it go enjoy it thank you guys so much for watching liking commenting and subscribing don't forget to respect the drive and i'll see you in the next one